Hey there crafty friends, it's Tina the Scrap and Rabbit. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel today. I'm going to go ahead and make a project featuring a 7 Kids craft store stamp set called Pizzeria Kids. These two stamp sets were part of the August 2020 release and I haven't had a chance to play with them just yet. I am really loving this image right here and I think this is the one that I'm going to center my project around. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and pull out that image and get it stamped onto some white cardstock. The cardstock of choice for me is an 80 pound hammer mill premium uh, color copy cover cardstock. These images stamp beautifully. I'm using some VersaFine ink since I'm going to be heat embossing it with some clear embossing powder. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, stamp out a few images just in case uh, the first one doesn't go well. Once I have that embossing powder, I'm going to go ahead and heat up my heat tool and get that all melted. And then there is my beautiful image of that adorable cutie. I went ahead and cut out the images using my scanning cut. And in order to color, I'll make it easier to color, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just tape it to a little piece of printer paper just so that I have that leverage that I can hold. Outlining the face with the E11. This is my skin color uh, go-to. I'm going to blend that out with the E00. And getting in the neck and the hands and then blend that out with the E000. For the face, I like to leave it uncolored until I go to do my second layer, second or third layer. Doing the outline, the darkest color is going to be the E04 and I color in where I feel like the darkest shadows are going to be. And then hitting all of that area where the skin is, I'll blend that out just a little bit using the E11. Getting in the two hands and the neck and then blending out with the E00. Bringing that color forward to the center of the face. And then I'm going to add a little cheek color there using the R20 for a little blush and then blend that out with the E000, bringing more color towards the center of the face. And then the last color, my lightest, is the E0000 and then I'll go ahead and color in the very center area. I don't want to forget the little nose, so I'm going to use some E11 and the E00 to blend that out a little bit. Moving on to the hair, the E57 is going to be one of my darker shades, and I'm just kind of coloring in the areas that I want the hair to be dark. I'll blend that out with the E55. And this, it, the area is so small. <laughs> Again, blending out with the E30 is my lightest color. You don't need to use so many colors. I tend to use a lot of detail in my coloring, and sometimes you don't even notice it because the areas are so small. But I'm going to go in and repeat that whole process with the 57, the E55, and the E30 with all of the little areas of his, his hair, his mustache, and his eyebrows. And then just to add a little shadows for some more contrast, I'm going to go in there with the E59. And then that really helps the hair to look like it has more dimension. And now I'm going to move on to the chef hat and jacket. And I'm going to use my N, uh, my neutral grays and the N3 as my darkest color. I'm going to fill in the areas where I see there's where the shadows would be. And then I'll blend that out with the N1. Now most of the image I won't color because it is going to be white and so really I'm just adding some shadows to help give it some dimension and some depth and then kind of fit with the rest of them. Blending out with the N0 and that is my first layer of color and I typically like to do a couple layers and that really helps to make the image pop and then give you a little bit more depth. Now just to smooth out some of the lines, I like to use my colorless blender when I'm coloring any image that I want to be perceived as white. 
and then that helps to get rid of any stark lines. Now here I'm going in with that second layer, adding some of that N3 again, deepening the shadow areas, and then again just blending out with the N1, and then I'll also blend out with the N0. And then once I feel like I've got a nice blend, I'll go ahead and use the Colorless Blender again to soften any harsh lines. He's turning out so cute, I just love this image. Now for his little scarf, I want to use some reds, so I'm going to go to my R37 and then blend that out a little bit with the R35 and then the lightest color being the R32, which is more of a pink, but then it kind of gives you a little bit of a highlight. I'm gonna go in with a deeper color, the R59, to add a few dark lines to really make it more of a contrast and help that image to pop just a little bit more. And then I'll blend out again with my R37 and then the R35 adding that extra layer of color, and then I'll blend it out again with my lightest R32. And here I'm just going back in one more time, just add a little bit more touches to get more of a deeper red color. The area is really small, you don't need to use this many colors. I'm gonna add his mouth, I'm gonna use the R56 and the R83, it is really, really tiny, so there's not a lot of coloring there, but I do like to fill that in. For the pizza pan, I'm going to make it silver and using the cool grays. And I chose these yellows for the cheese on the pizza based upon some pattern cardstock that I'm going to show you in just a minute. And then using the, a, the R37 for the pepperonis. And then for the crest, I'm going to go in with the E13, the E21. And I think for the lightest color, I use the E00, I think. So now I'm just blending that out, leaving some white space there for the highlight, and then blending it out with the E00. For my card base and layers, I'm going to use the Mama Elephant Slim, Slimline Basics die. I already cut out the layers using the same white cardstock as I colored my image. And I want to go ahead and stamp my sentiment since I want to make a shaker card. So to stamp the sentiment, I'm going to go ahead and use my stamping tool and some anesthetic powder. And pulling out the sentiment, I need to figure out how I'm going to put it on my panel. Now, for some of you, you might not agree with this, but I tend to cut my stamps to make them suit my project. So hopefully this isn't upsetting to you. I'm going to go ahead and cut my sentiment. It works just fine. I'm able to put it back together anytime I need to have it in full, but this way I'm able to break it up and get more usage out of my stamps by doing this. And using the Versifying ink again, I'm going to go ahead and stamp up that image and then use my embossing powder and get that melted with my heat tool just like I did with the image and that's going to help make the sentiment really stand out and really pop. I like to heat up my heat tool for a few seconds to where it's nice and hot before I actually put it on my project. And then for this panel, I'm going to use some double-sided tape. And that is really going to uh, work well for my acetate alternative that I use, which is from Amazon, and it's called Duralar. And I really like that. It's really easy to use. And each sheet comes with that little uh, layer there to help protect it from getting any stickiness on there. And so I like to use that layer to protect my uh, plastic. For the double-sided tape, I'm going to use my big roll of 3M that I've had in my stash forever. And I'm going to double layer it so that I get a nice thick piece of foam. And the two add up to about a three millimeter foam. And that works perfectly for a shaker where you don't want your sequins to stick. Just to prevent them from getting stuck, I'm gonna use my anti-static powder tool in the corners 
before I put down my sequins. I chose these sequins from my stash. They're little white heart-shaped sequins along with some red to coordinate with the pepperoni pizza. And I'm just going to fill my little windows, but not too full. I also have these little open heart sequins that are reddish in color, and I'm gonna scoop some of those out. I do want there to be some room to show this adorable paper that I had in my stash from Recollections. And it's got these little pizza slices with the heart pepperoni and trying to get that layered on there. And I'm gonna have to lean right over it, so excuse my head <laughs> popping in there, my hair but I wanna make sure that it's straight so I don't end up having to trim any of it. And it's cut slightly smaller from my panel. And there you go, there's my shaker and the sequins move around there beautifully. And you can still see that pattern paper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and glue it down using some liquid glue onto the next layer of my card, which is that scallop layer. So now I just gotta get that centered on there as well and I'm just trying to angle it and kind of have to lean forward a little bit to make sure that I get it on there nice and straight. So once that is glued, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere it to my card base, which I cut down to three and a half by eight and a half, and using liquid glue, I'll get that put on the front of my card base. So now that that is adhered down, I need to go ahead and decorate it. There's my little pizza man, and I think he's so cute. And I put him in the center, so he's the star of the show there. Now you can leave the card just as is. I have cut out these little hearts using some red glittered cardstock, and now I'm just arranging them into a design that I like. And I'll go ahead and adhere all of those down with some liquid glue. And I think that it's coming together so cute. This is a card that can be used for Valentine's Day or for just a hello, just a fun little card for a friend if you know they love pizza. And it's just so cute. Once I get my hearts down, now again, you can just leave it as is, but I always like to add a little more sparkle to my cards. And so I looked through my stash and I found some clear iridescent sequins and now I'm just going to arrange them on my card. And I'll glue these down using the art glitter glue. Once I figure out where I wanna place them, I like the art glitter glue to adhere gems and sequins. And I have this nifty little tool that helps me pick up those sequins and put down the drops of glue and that helps it come along a lot quicker, putting these little embellishments on there. Once I get the last of my sequins glued down, then I will have my finished card. So there it is, there is my shaker card featuring that adorable little pizza man. Thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. I have a link to the shop if you'd like to go ahead and visit and check out the beautiful stamps that are available and many other items as well. Here are a couple other videos for you to enjoy. Thanks again for stopping by. I hope you like this video. I hope you will subscribe. And until next time, everyone, have a wonderful day. Happy crafting. Bye for now.